the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And Brothers and sisters, let us, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess, Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who by the glorification of your Christ and the light of the Holy Spirit have unlocked for us the gates of eternity, Grant, we pray, that partaking of so great a gift, our devotion may grow deeper and our faith be strengthened. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. King Agrippa Bernice arrived in Caesarea on a visit to Festus. Since they spent several days there, Festus referred Paul's case to the king, saying, There is a man here left in custody by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jew brought charges against him and demanded his condemnation. I answered them that it was not Roman practice to hand over an accused person before he has faced his accusers and had the opportunity to defend himself against their charge. So when they came together here, I made no delay. The next day I took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought in. His accusers stood around him, but they did not charge him with any crimes I suspected. Instead, they had some issues with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died, but who Paul claimed was alive. Since I was at a loss, how to investigate this controversy, I asked if he were willing to go to Jerusalem and there stand trial on these charges. And when Paul appealed that he be held in custody for the emperor's decision, I ordered him held until I could send him to Caesar. The word of the Lord. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Bless the Lord, O my soul, with all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, you mighty in strength who do his bidding. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Spirit will teach you everything and remind you of all I told you. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with them, 
He said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this, signifying what, by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. In the gospel, Jesus seems to have this kind of conversation with Peter, and Peter seems to be in good terms with Jesus. And Jesus keeps asking him, do you love me? And Simon Peter keeps saying, yes, I love you, yes, I love you. He says it for three times. Um, and he says it in such an obvious way that, okay, of course I love you. Yet, as we know, in different excerpts of the Gospels, uh, such as Luke and as well as Matthew, it shows Peter actually abandoning Jesus three times as well. You know, when we actually get to that time during Lent, Jesus is betrayed by Peter three times before the cock crows. So it shows us that Simon Peter, you know, wants to follow in the Lord, and he's always willing to accept command of the Lord and whatever mission that he has for Peter, yet because of the weakness of his own humanity, he is kind of sword. In reality, he denies him three times as well. Simon Peter oftentimes represents the papacy, the Pope. So this shows us that the Pope himself is imperfect he is perfect in the sense that his office, the papacy, is in light of Christ's office. That's why that office is perfect, as Christ is perfect, yet beneath that, his humanity is human himself. So he will fall into sin himself. So that distinction is very important. The infallibility of the office of the papacy as well as the humanity of the Pope himself. And that actually goes for all priests, all priests who kind of take on this office, which is perfect, as Christ is perfect, yet all are sinners beneath the office itself. And that also goes for all lay people who partake in the authority of Christ uh, through their baptism and strengthened in their marriage as well as other sacramentals, but beneath that, all are imperfect. So in this sense, we are all imperfect in the church, seeking the grace of God, seeking that perfection uh, of Christ, seeking that sense of authority from Christ, because we simply will fall short always. But this also shows us that God really never abandons us. God never abandons us. He is always with us. It is part of his essence and is part of his, his existence is to be with us always. So when we actually turn away from the Lord, it is through our selfishness that we actually turn away. But God is always there coming toward us, and he is always actually with us. So we have to be mindful that he is always with us, but he never, and he never abandons us. 
So as imperfect as Simon Peter was, he was always willing to say yes to the Lord, saying yes to the Lord, um, to receive his graces. So he was able to lead the church um, through his imperfections, always seeking the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So as Christians, we are always imperfect, but we also seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and God will never abandon us. Putting all of our intentions together, we offer up our prayers to our Heavenly Father. We pray for the church, and we pray especially for this diocese, the merging of the two dioceses, and for the, uh, the new Archbishop-elect. For this, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our society and uh, those who lead our um, republic, that they may be guided by the Holy Spirit. We also pray for um, that sense of respecting human life, um, that dignity of human life, and a sense of end to racism itself. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for all of us for a greater zeal for the Lord by the reception, by receiving the Holy Spirit in, in our lives. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for those who are struggling, especially those who are without homes and food. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And for the prayers and the silence of our hearts. For these and for all the faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, listen to our prayers and answer them accordingly in your time. Grant us through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, for the divine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look mercifully, O Lord, we pray, upon the sacrificial gifts of your people, and that they may become acceptable to you. Let the coming of the Holy Spirit cleanse our consciences through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to lodge you yet more gloriously yet when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, 
heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and with all the saints, on his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. For this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Andrew, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, glory, and yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the, of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whose mysteries we are cleansed and nourished, grant, we pray, that this banquet which you give us may bring everlasting life through Christ our Lord. Amen. So after the final blessing, we'll uh, distribute communion. Uh, just follow the lead of the usher. So as we stated earlier, uh, this side, if you want to receive tongue or hand. This side is tongue or hand, and this side is only hand. This side is only hand. And if you can just um, stand in front of the blue line, the priest will come to you and give you communion. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thank you.